Not sure where to hunt for yield? Well, you're not alone. Do take a listen to this sound from the street. I'm a teacher and I work for the city of New York and I'm keeping all my money in my retirement accounts and hoping that it'll grow and not making any future investments at the present time because it may be risky out there. Right now, I'm staying out of the market. I'm waiting for the next big crash so I could buy stocks on the cheap. I'm in fixed income right now. Well, he's uh, not alone. According to the Investment Company Institute, the amount of money flowing into bond funds may exceed the cash that went into stock funds during the Internet bubble. Now we've even seen a rush into 100-year corporate issues. Let's go hunting for yield in corporates. Joe Balestrino is fixed income market strategist at Federated IS with the U.S. Uh, with us. Sorry, I apologize, uh, Joe. Um, a 100-year corporate bond. Why would you buy one? It's a long bond. It's it's almost under. The, it's it, you can't judge a book by its cover, so to speak. A 100-year bond is yes, definitionally it's 30, it's 70 years longer than what we would typically buy. But it's interest rate sensitivity. Oddly enough, if you go from a 10-year to a 30-year, you've doubled your interest rate sensitivity, your duration. To go from 30 to 100, you barely move the dial, so you get free yield. You get more yield, usually another 25 or 30 basis points to extend and. It's free in our minds. Why wouldn't you buy more yield with, with very little interest rate change? So uh, those who focus on, oh, my goodness, 100 years, they're looking at it the wrong way? I think they are, Mark, because the reality is most of us buying a 30-year bond probably are not going to be sitting in front of our screens to see that mature. We're certainly not going right. to see it for a 100-year. And, and as I say, you get more yield and you basically don't pick up any more volatility. That sounds like a pretty good equation from a total return perspective. Narrow it down a little bit for us, uh, Joe. Which issues in particular in the 100-year space should investors be looking at? Well, it, it, when you're going out that far, even conceptually, we have to be focused on a high-quality company, and that's why Norfolk Southern was able to do it this week, you know, a steady cash flow generator, dare I say, pred predictable type company. In the past, we've seen companies like News Corp and Disney and Coca-Cola, and even in our portfolios, one of our larger holdings, which is public information, is Boston University bonds, matures in 2097. We think that's a fairly stable industry, so to speak. You don't want a, a, an up-and-coming growth company that can disappear on you. But in, in general, you don't think that the, um, the rush into corporates is a bit overdone right now? We do not, actually. We think it's, it's one of the better places to be, primarily due to the strength of balance sheets. Corporations used all that issuance last year to build liquidity, and, and earnings are strong despite the fact that the economy is so weak. Earnings are very strong. Liquidity is very strong. Default rates are almost zero. And that, that one word, default, is, is the risk in corporate bonds. Joe, thank you very much for that. Thank you.